Today's blogging tips video is a really good one. It's a super requested video and it's all about blogging niches, what's the best blogging niche to get into, what makes the most amount of money, my opinions on blogging niches. And so we're really just diving deep, getting into the dirty of blogging niches. Take a shot every single time I just said blogging niche because I'm pretty sure I just said it like 30 times in about 30 seconds. First, first things first, there are a million different blogging niches. And I truly believe that one of the best things about blogging is that no matter what you have a blog about, you can be extremely successful. Like it could be the most popular niche in the world or it could be the least popular niche in the world and you could still make money from it. However, there's a reason that there are the most popular niches versus other niches because some do simply just make a lot more money. It's easier to make money. Disclaimer before I get into the, this is that there truly is a million and five different niches that you could choose. And when I was starting my niche with like the college home decor, dorm decor, no one did it and probably no blogger would have, well, I'm sure they would say what I said, that you could be successful in any niche, but it wasn't necessarily something that people were like, you can make money in this. Um, and now we are making money from it. So. If you're not in this niche or if you have a different idea on a niche that you wanna get into that isn't in this video, go for it. You can be super strategic with how you implement affiliate marketing and other things to make money from it. But again, there's reasons why some niches are more popular than other niches in the blogging world. First up, let's go over these popular blogging niches. And this was fully done in my brain with what I have seen in the past be the most successful with just like other bloggers I've followed, um, what I see to be the most popular. And I think you'll probably agree with me. I mean, this isn't rocket science. We see these blogs pop up everywhere and a lot of them are super, super successful. So in my opinion, the most popular blogging niches are fashion, parenting blogs, finance, lifestyle, and food. Every single one of those has its pros and cons, obviously, as in every single business. These are the ones that you will see most often, and that is because the key to being successful in the blogging world is to hone in on people's obsessions. And so you gotta think about what your obsessions are because you're gonna need to write about it for a really, really long time, but also what are other people's obsessions because people spend money on things that they are obsessed with. For me, when you're going to college, you are obsessed with going to college. It's all that people ask you about. It's all that you think about. I was obsessed with my dorm room. I could care less about the actual college classes, but I would fall asleep at night thinking about what comforter I was gonna buy for my dorm room. Like I was obsessed. People in the fashion industry, Sarah, for example, my right hand in this blogging world, she is obsessed with fashion. She follows so many fashion bloggers and that's because she's obsessed with it. She loves it, it's her passion. Um, let me think, parenting blogs. You're obsessed with your kids. You wanna know every single thing that you can do for your kids, every single way that you can be a better parent. Food blogs, people are obsessed with food. I'm obsessed with food. I love cooking, I love looking at different recipes. Um, finance, when you are in to your money, you get obsessed with it. And so I think that this is, again, the key is figuring out people's obsessions. And so like for our blogging courses, for perfecting blogging and perfecting Pinterest, I constantly used the idea of a cat blog. And I really think that that's a really good blog idea because when people are getting cats, they're obsessed with their cat that they're getting. And so they do a ton of research, they buy a ton of things for it. Um, and so that's really something that you can capitalize on and use to your benefit. I also have found in just um, me doing this that another thing that has been really helpful in my niche and something that I didn't necessarily think about is the ebbs and flows of it. So. Again, this is another thing that you could argue. This is really just opinion based and what I've experienced in this blogging world and my, you know, my personal experience, but also me studying a million different other bloggers. There is a pro to being very consistent stream of income. What, and what I mean by that is like, you can basically expect that your niche is gonna be just as popular in January as it's gonna be in August. 
what I necessarily didn't think about but has been very beneficial for us is that BSL, our numbers can be all over the place, especially in the beginning when we didn't have our eggs in different baskets. When people are going to college, I mean, like our high is in the summer because that's all that people are thinking about. That's the normal time people go to college is in August. So those, pre those months prior to them going to college, I mean, our affiliate sales skyrocket, our views skyrocket, but in January, no one gives, no one's thinking about that. Or in September too, when you're already in college, like no one's really thinking about that either. And so we have been able to really capitalize on those ebbs and flows. And then it's also thinking about like holidays and how you can capitalize on that. Um, and so that's been able to generate like more buying power and more money in that sense. Again, you could argue that it's probably better to have like a more flat niche where you're kind of earning money all the time. But I think that goes back to also that obsession. I wish I would have thought about this obsession thing earlier because I actually think it's such a good way of thinking about it on like what to write about, like what are people obsessed with and how is their obsession turning into revenue for you? And I do think that like your passion for something shows through what you're writing. I, it will never make sense to me, the people that start a niche on something they don't know about. Like it's, it's always amazing just because like some people will email me if you're one of these people, <laughs> sorry. People will email me about starting like the how to start a blog niche. Cause that is a profitable niche. Like people get obsessed with it, you know? Like I was obsessed with it. I spent so much money on courses, everything. I spent hours and hours researching. And it's interesting to me when these like bloggers who have had a blog for three months want to add a how to start a blog side to their business. Like it's just like there's so much that you need to learn. If you're going to start a cat blog, you got to own cats and you don't technically need to. But like I feel like it shows through writing and I always say readers aren't stupid. You're not stupid. I'm not stupid. No one is stupid. You can tell people's bluff from a mile away. You can tell when someone knows what they're talking about and when someone doesn't know what they're talking about and are simply there to make money. And th that never works. At least in my experience, I've never seen that work. So yes, basically in all of that, there's three takeaways. First takeaway, you can have, you can blog about anything and be successful. Truly, I 100% believe that, Sam behind that. Two, hone in on people's obsessions. That is the key to really starting a successful blog. Get obsessed with what people are obsessed with and what you've been obsessed with. And then three, what was my third point? Oh, probably third point was you actually have to be interested in what your niche is. There's so much more to life than just money and making money from your blog. And if you go into your blog thinking only about how you're gonna make money, I mean, I would be lying if I said I started my blog and didn't think about how I was gonna make money. Like I said, I was very strategic from the beginning, but there was so much more power behind what I wanted to do than just the money side of things. Like I have had a business plan for what I'm doing now since I started the blog. And even now we're at the point which is like gonna be the next video is how we reinvest in the blog. And it, this is something that has been constantly on our mind because it's at the point now where it's like we've done, we figured out how to make money and we, you know, in this blogging world, we've, we know how to make money on the blog. Is this what we wanna be doing for our entire lives to make money? And so you have to really find your passion and what you love and something that isn't just a short term, I'm obsessed with this for three months, will I be obsessed with this in five years? You have to think about that. So that is my thoughts on the blogging niche. I have to, I'm supposed to be in a meeting in three minutes, we do one-on-ones with the entire team every single month. So Sarah's one-on-one -on -one is in three minutes. So I gotta go, but I hope that was really helpful and um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We send out weekly blogging emails. We have a blogging email course, which I have worked so hard on for the last month. That is coming out either next week or the week after. So that's super exciting. It's like the best course that we've done yet. It's so comprehensive and micro and gets into every single detail. It's like a little bit overwhelming, honestly, but it's really good. And we tried to dumb it, not dumb it down, but we've tried to break it down so that it makes complete sense. 
But um, yes, make sure to check out our blogging courses. Make sure to subscribe to our blogging email, this channel, and I will see you at the next video.